I'm just a kid. There's a lot I don't know. One thing I do know is my folks never should have married. And they definitely should have never had a kid. But they did. It happens. The randomness of life and all that. When the chicken's up, I'm gonna go out back and work on my boat. Mm-hmm. Maybe they started out trying to be good parents. I don't know. But my very first memory in life is how much my father loved that damn boat. Here he is, hundreds of miles away from any real water. And even then, we're talking about the Gulf of Mexico. Just seems sad to me somehow. And my mom has been psychotically obsessed with movie stars to a point that defies explanation. Okay. I'll just take a bath. Well, go take a bath. Notice she was gonna take a bath. The shower was out of the question, see, because two years ago, some pipe in our shower broke. My father could have fixed it, but he was so tied up working on the boat, she hired this Marlon Brando plumber instead. And the shower never got fixed, as if it just never happened. Then there was the Paul Newman thing, when our roof needed fixing. And of course, our roofing problem never got fixed either. And how could I forget the day Audrey Hepburn came over to help my mom with the books? On second thought, I'd really rather not get into that one. It's not their fault, if you think about it. It's not like they sat down and had this conference about whether to get married and bear a son or not. Anyway, the story is that years ago, my father was a traveling salesman who just happened to stop in one Christmas Eve. My mother was engaged to the son of a pharmacist over in Lubbock, and he chose the night of the Christmas dance to confess he'd fallen in love with this cheerleader from Texas Tech. I sure could use a hot cup of coffee. I just made a fresh pot. Oh. So she was vulnerable that night. You can't blame her for that. Mm -mm -mm. That is some good, good coffee. Ah, thank you. And that's a handsome coat. Say nothing of your pretty dress, which I love, by the way, because the way it matches your eyes. Ah, not exactly. Oh, well, of course not exactly. That'd be too obvious. And we both know that that's not the kind of woman you are. Now, was there meeting some faded thing that would magically find us happy one day? Like a real family? No. It's not the way things work. That much I figured out. My mother had just come from seeing Splendor in the Grass. I think. She went to the movies every day and we only have the one theater, so whatever was playing. That's when it happened. And it changed my life forever.
The hospital says it'll be about a week. Then we can move her down to Galveston. Let's see, down there to her grandparents and her. And we uh, appreciate your taking her in like this. It was the right thing to do. Thank you, Mr. Reynolds. It's strange. My folks can't remember they're married half the time. And for all they know, I'm just some ghost floating around the place. Then they go and agree to take in this girl whose parents died in the accident until she got better. Enter, por favor. Brought you stuff for dinner. Are you aware I have a partially lacerated liver? Do you even have the slightest concept of what that does to one's appetite? Not really. My liver is partially lacerated, but I don't have a clue what it does to your appetite. Well, it probably can't help. I'm not hungry. Okay, uh, just leave it here for you. My parents' bodies were sent back to Amarillo for burial, I take it. How is the accident listed on the official police report? Speeding? Driving while intoxicated? Uh, I'm, I'm not really sure. My father was a heavy drinker, you know. No, I didn't know that. Well, now you do. That was one goddamn doozy of an accident, that's for sure. What? You never heard anyone cuss before? Well, yeah, but not from a girl. Well, I'm very flawed. Extremely flawed, if you want to know the truth. I looked up the word flawed in the dictionary. I kind of knew what it meant, but after reading the definition, I began to wonder if maybe I was flawed too. But the strangest part was that for the first time in my life, I started to feel something for someone other than myself. It scared the hell out of me if you want to know the truth, but I liked it. screaming. It's late. You should get back to sleep. Screwing with me, are you? What? You seem to like me, which is fine because I like you too, but if you're acting like you do because my parents are dead and you feel sorry for me, then that's just bullshit. 
Hello? No, I'm not screwing with you. I like you too. Good. And I think it's time for us to leave. Leave? <laughs> Look, there's two people who you live with. They're nice and everything, but... My parents? Right. But from what I can tell, they don't really have anything to offer you, and they certainly don't have a thing to offer me. So, where are we going? Baltimore. I have an aunt and uncle there. I haven't seen them since I was five, but from what I can remember, they are both extremely hip. But I thought when you got better, you were going to go live with your grandparents in Galveston. Look, Ben, there's what happens to you in life, and there's what you make happen. It's the difference between having a plan and not. Do you see what I'm driving at here? Yeah, I think so. Good. Well, no use at getting up at the break of day and being all melodramatic about this. How much did you get? 25 bucks. Well, it's 25 more bucks than we had before. That's true. <laughs> plan is more than just some pipe dream. Pipe dream? A pipe dream is an unrealistic fantasy that deludes oneself into thinking that it's an actual plan. It's a very popular expression. I'm surprised you've never heard of it before. I didn't say I never heard it. Anyway, a real plan is an actual goal that you believe in enough to create a set of circumstances, which leads you to and into a plan. Comprende? Where do you come with this stuff? I mean, what part of your brain works so hard it makes you think and talk like that? My father was a professor with a very wide vocabulary and lots of unique ideas. When he wasn't teaching his students, he taught me. So what did your mom do? She never did anything. I think most of what you say is true. Some I just don't understand. But I also think you like to screw with people's heads. 
I may be wrong sometimes, but I won't ever screw with your head. Ever. Me too. Ever. Take a look at her new home, farm boy. Here? See that pen over there? It's a hog house. Now, why would a perfectly good hog not be outside on a day like this? So you're saying they don't have any more hogs? I'm making a calculated deduction. So what's your plan? It's important. I need to know what kind of plan you have for your life. the road. She made you these sandwiches. There's a well by the gas tank if you need water. How much do we owe you for room and board and water? Hmm. I imagine falling to sleep to the smell of pig shit ought to do it. be a pitcher for the St. Louis Cardinals. So you'll be a pitcher for the Cardinals? I like that plan. Do you know how many kids my age want to play in the major leagues? No. Then I don't think it matters. Well, I'm just saying it's more what you'd call a pipe dream than an actual plan. Are you any good? I'm always the best in my league. And it's what you really want to do? Yeah. Yeah. Then it's not a pipe dream. It's a plan. Learn to embrace it. Hall is the youngest guy ever to play for the major leagues. Yeah. So I pinched him for the Cincinnati Reds when he was 15. This is correct. And we're the ones who are going to break his record. Try hitting the corners. You're putting everything right down the middle. I'm not putting everything right down the middle. Come on, it's the seventh game of the World Series. Bottom of the ninth. Bases are full, two out. You've got two strikes on. One more strike and he's yours. And you know the only pitch you can throw is an outside slider, because that's the only pitch he won't be expecting. What? I don't know how to throw a slider. So you kind of hold it off center, middle finger on the seam. Then you throw it like your fastball. Come on, giddy up. We don't have all day. Come and come in. You 
should tell me what's going on. It's not part of the plan. I am sick of this. What do you think you're doing? Say something to me. I have had years of this. Years. No, I'm going into town tonight. That's what's happening. What's the problem? Yelling's extremely destructive to a relationship. You think you're communicating at the time, but the effect is completely the opposite. Are you even listening to what I'm saying? Yes. We won't ever yell at each other. Hey, don't make promises you're not prepared to keep. Well, that cuts both ways, you know. That goes without saying. Well, I just said it anyways. The Hardy Boys. Now, there's some heavy reading. I like the Hardy Boys. Come on. Let's get some sleep. Got a big day tomorrow. What's happening tomorrow? We're getting married. Yes. Yeah? Are we really getting married tomorrow? I mean, actually? Yes. Major part of the plan. Okay, now, as I understand it, you two want to spend the rest of your lives together as husband and wife. I think we should have done this days ago, but you know, men, when you rush them. So, uh, do you, Ben? Benjamin Reynolds. Benjamin Reynolds take this young woman. Cassie Kennington. Do the both of you promise to treat each other with dignity and love till one of the till the uh, drops dead? I do. I do. Married now. That's right. Oh, the ring. Okay. Congratulations to you both. I feel good about this whole thing. How about you? Yeah, I feel good about it. Uh, well, I don't have a lot to compare it to, but yeah, I, I, I feel good. Oh, if you want to kiss the bride, you can do that now in case I forgot to say it.
Don't worry. I'm not ready to have sex yet. Moving on that side. Just a little flat. This is up here. Yeah, she's in town at the library. She figures I ought to learn how to write, so has something to do when my baseball career's over. Sounds good to me. Sorry, is not much padding in that glove. You're 12 years old. Be 13 in a few months. Um, I gotta leave today, and uh, I don't know when I'll be back. But the wife, it's fine with her if you two stay here as long as you need. Why isn't your wife going with you? Well, she. Not a good person, I don't think. Lived a clumsy, selfish life. You seem like an okay guy to me. Hey, uh, show me that uh, hard slider like you did yesterday. something? Sure. Did you start out thinking you were good? My age, I mean. I'd like to think I did. Grown up, I've ever met, and I think he hates himself. Come on, let's pack up and keep moving.
You headed somewhere? Baltimore. It's a large city in Maryland. Well, I got an aunt in Baltimore. We're in that green station wagon next to the pissers. Our dad got a bladder transplant last month. Trust me, it's been more like a medical convention than a vacation. I don't mean to be forward, but have you been experiencing any bladder problems yet, Sheriff? No, I have not. Well, you're at the age when you should think about it. Ask our dad. He's over there screaming into the urinal right now. She, she might be right. You're not getting any younger, you know. Ward, I get five years off my life for you just to shut up. Five minutes. Hey! All right, get your things, getting back. Thank you, down. Now, I don't know much, but I do know I have a right to your names. And I know we have a right to an attorney, preferably one familiar with the laws of Arkansas concerning minors. Well, I ask you one more time, real slow, real nice. What are your names? Like I said before, my husband and I respectfully plead the fifth. Hey, Chief, why do you think she keeps calling that boy her husband? I don't know, Ward, and I don't care. Well, we actually got married last week. Nice to meet you, by the way. Oh, Raymond Ward. Pleasure's mine. Ward, do you think it's possible to get past formalities and try to figure out what to do here? Now, go on, you put that away before you blow somebody's head off. Go on. When we get proper representation, we'll be more than happy to give you our names. Well, girl, you're not under arrest, so there's no need for an attorney. Fine. Then we'll be leaving now. Now you sit down. You don't move until I tell you to. Am I getting through to you? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. That goes for the both of you. You read me, boy? Yes, sir. Well, all right. She could die. Well, how do you know she's gonna swallow her well, tongue? I can't tell from here. Let's get in there and take a look at her and see if she swallowed that. Come on. Oh, God, did she swallow her tongue? She swallowed it. Oh, Jesus, eh? She swallowed her tongue. Hey, get over here. Come on, come on. Okay, cradle her head with your hands. Well, what's that gonna do, bud? Well, I'm gonna try to pull her tongue out. Okay? Kid, I don't want her Listen to die. Listen to me. Don't move. Okay. Here we go. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Get her tongue out of her mouth. You're ready? Goddamn, kid! Kid! Oh, you little son of a... Oh, kid! Damn it!
wonder if those cops are still looking for us. Or maybe when you leave the state, they don't really care anymore. Not unless we're on some sort of a crime spree. I'm pretty sure breaking out of jail once, you know, doesn't make it a crime spree. Your brain's accelerating at such a high rate of speed, science is probably incapable of measuring it. What? Are you always gonna have this attitude? I just wanna know. As we travel through life, we adopt many attitudes, as you call them. That's my theory, anyway. I think you're hiding something from me. I am. Well, what? My chastity, which you will never have no matter how much you plead. <laughs> Oh, yeah, L like I've been pleading? Yeah, that that's a laugh. That's a real big laugh. Fastball doesn't have the same pop. Uh, the one against the barn probably built during World War II. Hey, darling. Memphis, Tennessee. Head east till you hit 63. Then go south, and about two hours you're there. Jackie boy, found ourselves a navigator. Where are you two headed? Baltimore. Jack boy, after Memphis, we're going to Baltimore. What's the story? They're taking us to Baltimore. Could you get the bags? Thanks. the actual life in the moment. There's satisfaction from villagers, but that's more awareness than living. Never thought of it that way. So, uh, what made you become a writer? Depends between on women. I recommend both highly, but use good judgment when dealing with toxic pleasures of any kind. <laughs> Him. He a rider too. <laughs> nah, he just lives his life and everything seems to work out. Oh, yeah? Nice being up bright and early to take in the new day. Yeah, that's what they say. Where are we anyways? Life in hell, Kentucky. By the way, did I ever thank you? Because it would be way too comfortable for me and my banged up body to be on a nice warm bus heading exactly where we want to be going. We're married, you know. That's supposed to count for something. He was a nice guy. So we talked. It wasn't like I kissed him or anything. Jeez. 
Yeah, whatever. Jealousy. It's a good trait to have in a husband. Unless, of course, he gets overly possessive. Okay, why don't you just rest your tired ass and let me make the calls for a little while? Tired ass? Where's that sweet, innocent youth I used to know? Don't you worry about it. He's in here somewhere. We better be. <sighs> Mr. Teenage Marilyn riding in our car. Ooh, well, I'll be sworn. And he's front runner for Mr. Teen America. Mr. Teenage America? Tell us about his son. We got all the time in the world. Is uh, Marilyn your let home state? Let him tell it. Him tell it. Well, actually, my cousin's got all the stories. Did you know last night she walked across the state of Kentucky on her hands? Well, she don't look like she's in shape to walk to the corner from what I see. That's how she got hurt. Oh. She was just a mile from the border when these cattle just broke through a fence and commenced to start trampling her. My goodness. That must have been them, what you call Bramas. them? A them brambles mm -hmm. can be real mean sometimes. Let him tell it now. But she wouldn't stop till she got to that border. Mm. Even though her arm was fractured in seven places. Mm -hmm. Ripley's Believe It or Not has come to her house next week to interview her about it. Pull over. Pull over? We still got a long I ways to go, yeah. Pull over. I want to get on the back seat and talk with this child. Ripley's believe it or not. Can you even imagine? Well, I'll be sworn. <gasps> Miles. I can't tell you how pleased I am with the way things have gone so far. What's going on with the alarm anyway? It's all right, just a little swollen. Oh, Jesus, Cass. Wait until we get to Baltimore. Maybe because your arm's about to fall off. The break's healed, but there is some severe inflammation around that cut, young lady. Here you go, Daddy. Where exactly around here do you two live? A few miles from town. Our father was laid off from the paper mill, so money's a little tight right now. What paper mill? You really are a good brother to have brought her here. Well, she's the only sister I have, and I wouldn't trade my brother for all the silver in the world. Isn't that sweet, honey? It is absolutely adorable. I think that face is definitely going to break some hearts one day. How old do you think he is? My brother is 12 years old, and I'm very sorry that your daughter can't find boys her own age to play with. <clears throat> uh, 
uh, what's your father's name? Virgil. That's his first name. Uh, yeah. Virgil Pappas. I don't know anybody named Pappas. Well, like we said, we live quite a ways from town. Call Sheriff Myers. There's just something not right here. I'll get it, Daddy. Here's the truth. My mother got arrested for armed robbery five days ago in Arizona. Our father left when we were little, and the state was gonna put us in different foster homes. Oh my. We've been together our whole life. So we just decided we'd stay with our cousins up in Vermont. You better be telling the truth, son. You've all just been so amazingly kind. I couldn't lie if I wanted to. Once we get to Vermont, we'll send whatever we owe. Gratefully. You were absolutely incredible. I mean, seriously, it was like watching Hamlet or something. Maybe you should be an actor when your baseball career's over. I thought I was supposed to be a great writer. Oh, yeah, don't be an actor. It's way too skittish of a lifestyle. So, what can I get you little chickens this morning? Some silver dollar pancakes or some piggies in a blanket, I bet? Two coffees, both black. So, I watch those people behind you walk in. They look like real softies. I bet we can catch a ride from them. was right about her aunt and uncle being hip. They seemed hip to me, at least. Fresh lemonade. Delicious. I mean, they took us in out of the blue without making a big deal out of it. I'd say that's pretty hip. Cheers. Cheers. Hmm. Mm. Anything we, uh, we need to go over? I mean, I, th I think with children, there, there needs to be some rules. Like what? Well, the only one I can think of is one that should go to bed. Oh, hmm. midnight? That sound fair to you guys? It seems reasonable. But okay, wait, wait, wait. I mean, let's be realistic. What about the weekends? Right. You know? Uh, two? Who goes to bed at two? Come on, yeah, four. Right. Why don't we say three? Everybody okay with that? Very generous parameters, Uncle. We won't abuse the privilege, sir. I have the most beautiful room for you. There's a parachute on the ceiling, and it'll be like your own little palace. Does it have a single or a double mattress? It has a single. We'll need a double, with my legs stiffening up sometimes and the two of us being married and all. You're married? That must be what kids call going steady these days. <laughs> oh, no, we're actually married. Was it a large wedding? Oh, about 20 or 30 head. Mostly hogs and some sows. Oh, and pigs. <laughs> yes, there were several pigs in attendance as well. Well, I guess we'll get you a double mattress then. Look who's up. We've recently started getting up early. It's a sign of discipline, I think. You may be right. Oh, and tell your wife thanks for the coffee. It's, it's very good. I'll be sure to tell her. Oh, and um, Uncle, 
Is it all right if we paint a straight zone on the side of the building? We'll pay for the paint. You mean like a, a baseball strike zone? Yes. My husband's going to be a major league pitcher. Well, I don't see a problem with that. Terrific. We'll have a wonderful day. You too. Both of you. about to start, sir, and your cooperation is appreciated. Please remain in your seat or I may have to call security. What are you guys up to anyways? Appearing directly from Paris, where she has been showing for the kings and queens and the very special society's elite people, Fashion World, brightest new star. They're writing songs of love, but not for me. A lucky star's above, but not for me. With love to lead the way, I found more class of grace. Thank you. I'm so glad we went with this dress and not the green shawl. Remember how the glitter had us hypnotized? I know, remember how we just kept on staring at him? I hold a last and also back a day. Although I can't dismiss the memory of her kiss, I guess she's not born. At first, I couldn't really tell. But Cassie was starting to slip away inside herself. Sasmo. I can't do that. Come on, you played like half of it last time. I thought Armstrong himself was in the room. Yeah, I got goosebumps. Do it again. Come on, give it a try. All right. Take your time. When I look back, it feels like my fault. Not that I couldn't figure out why she was sad but not being able to see just how incredibly sad she really was. The problem was, I didn't know what to do about it. She had this grip on me, but was also pushing away as hard as she could. Get fun in the frogs. Told you there weren't going to be any here. It's funny. That's funny. Nice to see you got. Some sense of humor left, India. How about a towel? There's a summer league in Maine where all the major league scouts go to. We'll head north at the end of the week. If they don't sign you this year, we'll enroll you in school up there and get you signed next summer. Cass, I'll be 13 next summer. Nobody signs 13-year-old kids. Sometimes your negativity just absolutely exhausts me. What if I like it here and I don't want to leave? Going to Maine is the plan. You want to screw it up? Go throw yourself a party. How about a towel? Okay, what was the first name of Ernest Hemingway's wife? The last one when he blew his brains all over the place. Uh, Duke. Mary. Okay. 
who was the right fielder for the Cleveland Indians in 1959. Sir Douglas Big Stick or something. Huh? Rocky Calavito. Yes, my lord? You've almost completely changed since we got here. I need to know what's going on. The real question is why you're putting it in such a negative context. Yes, I am withdrawing somewhat, but is that a sin? Great. Take a, a major problem, even though you won't tell me what it is, and turn it into one of your brainy discussions. Oh, is that your opinion? You did finish the seventh grade, so I want to give it the weight it deserves. And you graduated from Harvard, right? Okay, cowboy. You want to play? I'm not exactly sure what we're playing here, but yeah, let's go. It's all about introspection, a concept which you're no doubt incapable of digesting at this point in your narrow-minded, sheltered, pathetic life. Go oh, screw yourself. Start talking to me like a real person. I told you I was flawed when we met. Yes. Everybody's flawed, just in different ways. You guys look good together.
After a while, Cass calmed down, then went to sleep. I guess I hoped that when she woke up, things would be okay. But I was wrong. So, Cassie became a patient in a children's psychiatric ward in Virginia. Ready, front! And I ended up at some bullshit military academy down in North Carolina. I guess Cassie's aunt and uncle figured they had to do something with me. But listening to Louis Armstrong and sending a kid to a military academy doesn't really jibe when you think about it. Cadet Reynolds, you're a mess. Tuck your shirt in. Fix your hat. Don't look at me, look forward! Freeze that! Arm. The only reason I stuck around was to see if Cass would get better or not. But she didn't. She'd gone over this edge and nobody knew how to get her back. Then the state made it official. Cassie would be put in a high-risk observation ward for a period no less than 18 months. 18 months. Unbelievable. Reynolds, I told you to grab some polish. Put that book down. I told you! I didn't know what to do or where to go. I thought about back home. Maybe my folks had half the police in Texas looking for me. But what's it all mean, really? They're living their lives. I'm trying to figure out mine. Truth is, I never had much in common anyway. Hot chocolate? Good kid. Think you should see my two. Both boys. A little bit older than you, but not much. <sighs> Every day I look for even the slightest sign of humanity in them. Not a drop. Hey, where are you headed in Richmond? Children's psychiatric ward. Going there to get somebody out. Do the people running the hospital know that you're coming? No. 
So you are going to illegally take someone out of the psychiatric ward? Yes, sir. Who are you breaking out? My wife. You're the one staying in, in the hospital. It's okay to tell me. No, I'm married, and I go get my wife out and take her with me. Any kids? No, but plan on having two eventually. Make it easy on both of you. Take mine.
it for as long as you could, Cass. You can't blame yourself for that. There are good parts to him, too. Cass? Yeah. Let's go. take you out here and we'll worry about everything later, okay? Okay. Before Cass and I started the rest of our lives together, there were a couple of things I needed to do first. Sometimes it's hard knowing if you should or shouldn't do something. So, you do what feels right at the time. anything when it comes down to it. I don't. I pretend I do sometimes, but I don't. But I do know this. When your life becomes what you dream it'll be, it's amazing. I think that walk sealed Dick Hughes' fate here in Game 5. We didn't break Maxwell's record of playing at 15, but I did become the youngest guy to ever pitch in a World Series. But nothing I did on the field compared to what Cassie and I accomplished together. It's 
kind of a miracle, really. Having the chance to give what you never got. Cass took a job editing children's books. And I pitched until my arm couldn't take it anymore. And, like she planned, I became a writer. A lot of what Cassie said turned out to be true. Most people do need a plan. Life is crazy enough without one. But the hardest part of life is losing someone you love. At first, you almost wish you never knew him. So it'd start hurting so much. Feels like it's gonna kill you. What you end up missing the most is the sweet burden of being needed. It gives your life a purpose. It really does. And it makes you feel great. That's something else Cassie taught me. It's all part of the plan. How do you speak in silence? Why do you sleep when you're away? If we just cut the tie lines, then we can simply sail away. Pack up your things, write it all down. You'll soon be accustomed to the sound. Dreaming out loud. Keep on dreaming.